Hello, my name is Holly Broman, Children's Librarian at Central Library, and... My name is August Van Der Beek, sign name A.V., and I'm the founder of Connecting Through Sign Language, Connecting Through Sign Language, and I'm the creative director. Nice to meet you. Santa Barbara Public Library is committed to being accessible to all members of our community, and we are always working to improve on this. We are so excited to collaborate with Connecting Through Sign Language, an organization that endeavors to bridge the gap between deaf and hearing communities. The Santa Barbara Public Library has commissioned two original stories in ASL on YouTube, and we'll have an ASL storytelling performance on November 14th. And this project will also provide some side-by-side -side interpretation of videos. Connecting Through Sign Language mission is to encourage deaf, hard of hearing, and hearing people from different cultures and different ages to come together to use sign language when communicating, to develop alliances with local resources and businesses, and to um, encourage and help deaf and hard of hearing self-expression and self-understanding through education and the arts. We want to thank the Santa Barbara Library and the California Arts Council and the National Arts Disability Council for their support and this wonderful opportunity. So thank you. And you're, you're in for a treat. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. You'll see the original stories, Silent House, a film by Hugo Martinez, and Jonathan Reyes, premiering November 20th. And Aquavax, a film by Emily Grigger and Terza Farley, premiering December 6th. It's my pleasure to introduce Hugo, who's going to be telling his life story next. Hello, my name is Hugo. This is my sign name. I am deaf. I was raised here in the beautiful city of Santa Barbara, California. I have been involved in this wonderful nonprofit organization called Connecting Through Sign Language for five years. I have been thinking about what to tell you about my life and I decided the topic will be why I sign. I picked this topic because I was inspired by my deaf friend. Her name is Stacy Abrams. She invented hashtag why I sign. She encourages people to share their reasons for signing, for supporting and connecting hearing families with deaf and hard of hearing children. And those people have posted their videos for hashtag why I sign on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. I posted mine own as well. I put mine on Facebook. And so today I would like to tell my story again but this time I'll tell you more and I'll go deeper. So why do I sign? My priority language is American Sign Language. It provides me with full visual access to communication. English and Spanish language, you have to use your voice and mouth to speak. And that doesn't work for me. I'm completely deaf. But sign language, it matches me. And so I'll tell you a little bit about my life before I started to learn sign language. Way long ago, I was born in Mexico City. My parents had no idea I was deaf. 
until I was about one. My parents had asked my aunt if she could watch me take care of me for a week. Well, my parents went away. And so my aunt did. But she noticed something was wrong with me. She tried to call my name. Hugo, Hugo. She snapped her fingers. I never looked at her. I just kept playing. She tried to make different types of noises, like she clapped her hands. She banged pots. I just kept playing and never looked. When my parents came back, my aunt let them know that something was wrong with me. My parents looked and tried and called my name, Hugo, Hugo. I just looked around and played. They became worried. They decided to bring me to a doctor. The doctor examined me and said, yes, I am deaf. My family was shocked. My mom sobbed. They didn't know what to do. I was the only deaf person in my family, my entire family. They had no idea how to teach me, how to speak, how to... Uh. But my mom found a small deaf school in Mexico City. And she put me there when I was maybe two or three. I don't really remember much about that school, but perhaps some I remember. There are about 10 deaf children of a variety of different ages from 8 to 20 years old. I was a baby. <laughs> but I didn't stay very long. My uncle, who had moved here to Santa Barbara, he told my parents, why not move to the United States? Maybe you could try. Maybe there's a better place for me to live here. And so my parents went ahead, and the three of us moved here to Santa Barbara when I was almost five years old. I went to the audiologist, and they did their test, tested my hearing, so I could get hearing aids. And the audiologist also told my parents about a deaf program that Santa Barbara had over at a school where they could teach you to sign and speak. My parents said, okay, they were happy. And I was lucky because a week after I moved here, I went straight to school. That school was Franklin Elementary School. That was my first school experience in the United States. I went to the deaf and hard of hearing classroom and I went in and I looked around and I saw so many deaf and hearing kids coming up to me signing and I didn't sign at all. I had no language, what, none. I was completely ignorant. I didn't know what to do. But I did notice they all had hearing aids on. And hey, I had one too. Maybe you were kind of the same. And they don't speak, they gesture. Okay. My teacher taught me how to sign with pictures on a big wall in her classroom. The pictures were of farm animals, cows, horses, dogs, etc. And I looked and I understood them because they reminded me of my grandfather. He had a farm. He had pigs, horses, sheep. I loved watching the animals. And I was also interested in the pictures. The teacher said, now you'll learn to sign. And I looked at her and she pointed at a picture of a cat and she signed the word cat and tried to tell me to copy her. I brought my hand up to my face and copied her and then did the same for dog and sheep. And that's how I learned all the pictures. Next day was time to learn words with cat written under the animal. I looked at the words and I had no idea. I looked around, the teacher pointed at the animal and the word and said, they're the same. It, they're both cat. Oh, okay. So now she took down all the words and handed them to me. And she said, well, where did they go? And so I kind of put them around and tried to guess until I was right. The teacher would gesture and sign no and yes, and I understood. 
and I had to put them together until I matched every single one. Then the teacher brought me to a desk, and we sat down with just the words. I saw Cat, and she signed Cat, and we went through the words until I was successful. Now I had to learn the ABCs. And that's how I learned sign language, from pictures, and progressed to written language. Then I went to English with sign language. The teacher told me about the possibility to learn to speak. And yes, I wanted that because I knew not all kids signed. They spoke, and I wanted to try to speak with them. And so I went to speech therapy. And I learned, but I struggled. And I learned to speak well. It worked. But there was one problem. I'd go home, and my parents spoke Spanish. And I learned to speak English. So I'd go home, and I'd speak, and my parents would go, no, 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 that's wrong, the R. You need to roll your R's. English was different. I became confused. I felt to learn to sign and to speak, and I had to focus so much. But I wanted to focus on other topics like math and science, history. I enjoyed learning. I didn't want to just focus on speech and waste my time. It didn't work for me. And so in class, they had an interpreter who signed in the classroom. And I could just sit and watch the interpreter while the teacher spoke, and I could learn so easily. My brain grew, and I realized speaking and trying to understand and struggling, it just didn't work. ASL is important to me. With it, I can communicate with the world. I can use an interpreter. I have a phone with a relay interpreter. I can call a doctor. I, no problem. It's wonderful. ASL, it lets me learn. It lets me express myself. It lets me feel comfortable. There's no struggle. I'm comfortable sharing my experiences. That's why I sign. And now, the next presenter is Emily Grieger. Em, take it away. I'm probably known as an outcast. I can integrate between the hearing and deaf worlds or cultures. I was born profoundly deaf. My parents didn't know until I was two. My mom was relieved because she knew something was wrong with me, but not my dad. He was really looking forward to me to listen to music. My parents learned British Sign Language, BSL, and taught me some signs. I got a cochlear implant when I was four and a half. I was the first child in the UK to receive a California implant. I couldn't really hear that well like hearing people can. I moved from one continent to another and had to learn a whole new language, which was American Sign Language, ASL. There was no interpreter here who knew BSL in Santa Barbara. So my mom was my interpreter for two years until I understood ASL. Dixie became my ASL interpreter from third grade to my senior year of high school. And I will explain more about Dixie later. Meantime, I took speech therapy classes to learn how to speak English. I do have to admit it was frustrating at times because I struggled with pronouncing some words. I took speech therapy for about 12 years from elementary to my senior year of high school. I spoke because I was the only deaf person at my school most of the time and I didn't have any other family members who was deaf, except for my cousin who lived in England. When I was 11, my brother was born and he was born deaf as well. He prefers to speak instead of use sign. We didn't want to feel different from other students at school. My brother was diagnosed as a newborn and got intensive intervention and got two dual 
cochlear implants, whereas I have one. Before I explain more about my frustrations, Dixie really helped me cope with my frustrations. She was like my second mom. She's been there for me over the years. I can't explain how much she's been there for me and still there for me to this day. It was easy for me to communicate with her at school. In middle school, I started to develop more frustrations because that's when students started to socialize and chat instead of playing on the playground. It's hard for me to understand people in group settings. Whenever I saw my friends laugh, I would laugh awkwardly. Whenever I would say, can you say that again? My friends would get annoyed. So I sat quietly eating my lunch, listening to music. I had a wire that connected to my transmitter to my iPod. Music tends to help me stay calm. It's a struggle for me to understand the lyrics unless I read the lyrics to the song first. Because if not, it would sound like a whole bunch of mumbling. I was really hoping I could sing. And I didn't know I could sing until I met my friend Maddie in high school. She also loves music. She was my only friend who was motiva motivated enough to learn ASL to communicate with me. And then I realized I can sing through ASL. So we took movie protection classes together. We made si silly videos. It was awesome. It was one of my best times of my life. Before I met Maddie, I really didn't have a social life in person. So I would go online and play Pirates of the Caribbean. It's an online game. And I was really satisfied with my social life during that time. It was easy for me to communicate with everyone because all I had to do was type. And that's where I met this person where we did role-playing stories. And that's where my creativity grew. And that's where I came up with the word dark. Sparkle was from my avatar in the game. Dark represents all the bad things that's happened to us in life or put us down. And sparkle represents hope, love, and all the positive things that happen in our life. So I envisioned that I wanted to establish a video production in the future where a diversity of people could come and express their thoughts on big screen and have it accessible for everyone and have everyone show their talents and skills. And the result is that it'd be accessible for everyone. Now, I really didn't get that serious about it until I went into CSUN and I majored in video production. And after all my struggles, I got an award from the dean and I got my degree in film production. Ever since I was a girl, I've always, I watched Harry Potter, the Goblin of the Fire, and that really sparked something inside of me. There is a character named Hermione in Harry Potter films, and I wanted to be exactly like her. So I started reading a lot of books. I started acting on stage. And in junior high school, I was lucky enough to perform at Disneyland in front of over 100 different schools. And that became my favorite thing to do. But then in high school, I realized it was tough to get actressing jobs. So I looked back in my life and remembered the Harry Potter movies. And, you know, I wanted to become a director because you could put your, your visions and put it into a movie. So that really grew and inspired me to become an actress. So I was involved in a few short movies. And even though I had encountered obstacles, I didn't allow my deafness to interfere. I found ways to do the things that I love. And I wasn't frustrated anymore. I met other people who were like me. And I felt I was not alone anymore. You know, I found my boyfriend, my friends, my family. They all believed in me and making me believe in myself and letting me know that I could have my dreams come true. Then when I was in college, I met my friend Tiz. And we both had the same dream. We wanted to change the world for the better and to share with everyone. And August, who established Connecting Through Sign Language, you know, she really helped me accomplish my goals in life. 
And now I'm able I was I'm able to produce movies with her. I was I was able to interpret songs at big and small events. So I want to show her my gratitude in helping us and helping me accomplish things that I love to do in life. And that really shaped who I am today. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce John. Hi, my name is John and I am deaf. I was born in the Philippines. My parents didn't know I was deaf for a while until I was about two years old. Our nanny noticed something was wrong with me. One day she was cleaning and she accidentally dropped silverware on the floor. And she noticed that I didn't respond. I didn't stop and look back. So when she noticed that, she decided to call my name, John, John. And she had a pot and a spoon and was banging it behind my back. And I didn't respond. I didn't turn to look. I kept playing with my toys. So she informed my parents that I was deaf. My parents were surprised and decided to sacrifice their life and their home and move to California for me to get a better education because there's no services for the deaf in the Philippines. My first language is English with speech therapy sessions. My first hearing device was a, it had a brown transmitter box that connected, that was over the chest with two wires that connected to my ears and with shoulder straps. And then later I started using a hearing aid. I had my hearing aid during my speech therapy sessions all through elementary. And when I went to middle school, I was involved with a deaf class and I started learning my ABCs in sign language. In my sixth grade level, they were teaching me second and third grade information, which I struggled with a higher education. So I noticed that some of my deaf classmates were being mainstreamed while I was in a deaf class. I decided to step up and take a challenge and enter mainstream classes. And thanks to my mom, my deaf teacher, and my mentor, they had supported my education and put me in regular mainstream classes and made sure to emphasize that in my IP, my individual education plan. In middle school, I, I learned sign language while still going through speech therapy sessions. And in high school, I started socializing more with deaf students. And that's where I learned Pigeon signed English, P-S-E. And that is when you use sign language using English sentence structure. When I went to college, I was exposed to deaf culture. And I started using American Sign Language, ASL. That's when I stopped using my voice and my voicing skills started to decline. I graduated with my uh, Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology with my accounting certification. A few years later, I decided to go and visit my home country, the Philippines. When I tried to say hi to people there, they rejected me because I was deaf. I learned that Philip people did not accept deaf people in their society. 
they labeled them and classified them as retarded instead of a person with a disability. I met a few deaf Filipinos there, and they told me their struggles with finances, you know, family support, and poverty issues. I also learned that they have a lousy education system, which therefore they couldn't find a job. And I went to go visit, when I went to go visit the deaf school in the Philippines, they expressed their poverty and their hard times with transportation to school because of no finances. I donated some money to the deaf program there to improve their education. And thanks to my parents for sacrificing their life, they helped me become who I am today. And now I am a post production manager and assistant operation manager for an agriculture cultivation company. I want to thank Connecting Through Sign Language and Santa Barbara Library for their great support here in the community. Thank you, and please welcome our next presenter, Tiz. The most important things in my whole life are communication and creativity. Did you know I was the only deaf person in my whole hearing family? My parents really cared about how they were, con they were going to connect and communicate with me. Before I was born, my dad actually met a deaf young boy and started learning sign language and ASL to communicate with him. Then later they drifted their own separate ways and my dad forgot his ASL skills. Then when I was born, the doctor checked my health, but they didn't check my hearing. My parents didn't know that I was deaf. And it's still a mystery of how I became deaf, no one knows. My parents later found out that I was deaf when I was one. The audiologist suggested the best options for me, and they were speech therapy, cochlear implants, and hearing aids. But he didn't mention anything about a program of where I could learn sign language during my early age. Luckily, my dad knew what he had to do. So he went and found a program to help me learn sign language at the age of two. Wow. I understand my parents didn't know sign. And guess how they communicated with me, especially my dad? Through facial expressions, gestures, body language. To, for him to express his stories. My dad is a really good actor and an improver. He's very creative. And that's what inspired me to become an artist and an actress. But I will talk a little bit about my passion later. And then my younger brother, Jez, he popped up in my life and wow, he learned sign at the age of one and a half. We're both close and my parents were relieved. We both did everything together. We created stories, we acted out stories, we did improv games, we did art together. I feel like I bestowed him with my creativity. My mom, she was also learning American Sign Language as well. 
and she taught me good things that would benefit me that I could to apply in my real life. My dad was continued to learn sign language to communicate with me. Then my youngest brother, he has Down syndrome and he has a struggle with speaking and he also learned ASL so that we could all communicate with each other and it would be a lot easier for everyone. You know, we, 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 we support each other and give each other a lot of love. When I was six, I started to envision of things that I wanted to become. And I thought I wanted to become an actress. And one day my dad had showed us this movie called The Miracle Worker. And it had a deaf blind character. Her name was Helen Keller. And wow, she was one of the people that I look up to and inspired me a lot. I was really excited. I was watching the movie. And so I got curious. So I went online on Google and to find out who was this actress who played Helen Keller. So I found a video on YouTube with her in an interview. And then I found out, wow, she's, she could hear and speak and see. I was like, what? She's not deaf blind? And during that time, most disabled roles and characters in movies were taken by hearing actresses that didn't have any disabilities. So I kind of felt lost and my life was upside down. So art really helped me stay positive. It helped me express my thoughts. And that's how I became talented as an artist. I was mainstreamed in school until high school. I met Mr. Phil Torn, and he himself is a teacher at the Deaf and Hard of Hearing program. He took me and other students to California School for the Deaf in Fremont. We went and watched a play and all the characters were all deaf. I was overwhelmed. At that time, I thought, no, I can't become an actress. It's too late for me to try. I never thought that I would transfer to a deaf school until my parents. They really encouraged me. Why don't you give it a try? Just see how it goes. And I was like, um, okay. But honestly, did I want to go to a deaf school? No, because I felt like I was going to be the outcast. You know, it's going to be a totally different world. But I was like, okay, fine, I'll try. So I ended up falling in love with the environment. Everyone was deaf. Everyone used ASL. Wow. It really impacted me. And at that time, when I was a junior, I saw a poster for audition for a play. And I was like, should I? Shouldn't I? I have no skills. And I understand, like, I knew I wanted to be an actress growing up, but... I wasn't sure about it. So I went ahead and I discussed it with my family and my friends. Should I go ahead and audition? And everyone encouraged me, go for it, go for it, go for it. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. That was a lot of support. So I went ahead and auditioned and I got the role. And it changed my life. I joined the drama club. And this was one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life. Wow. It really helped me build my confidence and helped me build my communication skills with other people and helped me I analyze myself and to find out who I was as a person. Back then, when I was little, I was a quiet little girl, and now I blossomed to this amazing, skilled artist, and that's who I am today. 
And, you know, even the, I didn't really understand about having a good friendship and being honest with people. You know, I was a big social butterfly. I had a lot of friends, but I didn't have any true friends until I met Emily Grigger. She taught me a lot on how to be strong and build relationships, the same relationships I have with my families. She really encouraged me to become a better person every day. And I never thought that her and I would have the same dreams and be able to accomplish our dreams together and do our journey together. And so we are partnering in our film production called Dark Sparkle. And, you know, this was actually one of my personal goals through life, to show, to be a deaf representative and to tell stories through visual and my artistic ways. I also want to say a big thank you to August. She is a founder of Connecting Through Sign Language. And she's given me the opportunity to share my work. You know, I really, it's great because I get to work with kids. And just to see their eyes sparkle you know, it's like, oh my God, they really enjoyed my performance. And now I have the opportunity to make short movies and projects. And now I have many hats because now I have different responsibilities. In this filmmaking, I do want to say a big And now it's time for our question and answers. Hello, hello, hello. I want to apologize for not having captions here live for our stories. We had a technical uh, issue. So we are going to download or upload this to YouTube and add our captions to it. So right now we are doing our question and answers. Hi, I want to introduce the founder of Connecting Through Sign Language. No, 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 no I'm okay. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Was the script used for the live interpretation? For me, I did type up a script for myself before coming here. I didn't have time to fully memorize my story. So when I was ready to record myself, they had a teleprompter set up, which helped me remember what I was going to say. So for me, I did have a script. Anybody else? I was invited to share my life story. So I wrote my bio. Of my story. So I knew what I wanted to share with you. So during the live interpretation, I did sign. And for a short time, I did use my voice. I used total communication. But depending on who was presenting their story, for myself, I did have an interpreter voicing for me at the same time that I was sharing while I was expressing my story.
The next question is, how did you get involved with CTSL? Did you want to go first and I'll go next? I got involved with CTSL about five years ago. No, I think it was more than five years ago. Previously, I was a tutor at Santa Barbara Community College. I was a tutor there for the ASL students. And so one student came up to me and her name was August. She was learning ASL. So I was her tutor and as time went on, she told me she wanted to hire deaf people for her business to teach deaf and hard of hearing kids. So she asked me if I was interested and I said yes. And from there, we started doing a cell story times for children. And that's how I got involved. For me, I met Hugo. And he sent me a text message asking me if I would be interested in volunteering at that time. And at that time, I was only volunteer, so I said, sure. So we met up at August's house. And we did a formal introduction. We sat down and chatted. And before I knew it, August had invited me to join the team. And I was like, fine, sure. So I joined CTSL every, I think it was 2018, August of 2018. So for about two years now. And ever since then, I've been really enjoying myself. We've been doing a lot of events in the community. We do ASL story time for kids. We interpret music. We participated in the Santa Barbara parade. And in, even here at the library. I got involved with CTSL really through Emily. She was telling me about everything that CTSL was doing for the community. And then one time they needed a volunteer for the Halloween event, the Munster Mash. So I decided to participate as a Munster at the show here at the library. And it was so fun to see the kids get all excited. And that's really how I got interested. So I started volunteering more often. We do ASL storytelling. I help with taking pictures. I have a, diff a variety of different roles here at CTSL. And I joined after Emily. I got involved with CTSL about two years ago. Hugo had invited me to participate as an ASL storyteller for kids at school. I really enjoyed myself at that time. So I started volunteering for more events for Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, Easter. And we were also able to participate in the Summer Solstice Parade.
where we inter interpreted music. It was a good, long, beautiful day. And it's great meeting a different variety of group of people. So I really look forward to doing this again. And I want to say thank you to August. for everything that she's done for the community. Will there be more live streaming events? That's a good question. Yes. We will have more events in the future. We will let you know about our upcoming events. We will announce it to the community, of course. You could check our website for more information. Well, right now, our website is under construction. So we're not done with it. So instead, you could email us at connecting through sign language at gmail.com. And we also have a Facebook page. So those are the two ways you could find out about our upcoming events. Next question is, what's the difference between BSL, British Sign, British Sign Language, and ASL? I guess I'm the only one that can really answer that question, right? No. Hey, what about me? The only reason why you know is because I taught you. <laughs> okay. Tiz, can you please do the ABCs? Wait, 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 no, no, no. You use ASL and I will use BSL for the ABCs. You ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and so on. Other examples are, this is a sign for dog in ASL, and in BSL, this is a sign for dog. The sign for mom in ASL is this, and in BSL, this is a sign for mom. This is a sign for dad in ASL. And this is a sign for dad in BSL. This is a sign for Christmas in ASL. And this is a sign for Christmas in BSL, which is coming soon. Yay. So they look completely different. ASL is easier to use than BSL. The reason for that is because with ASL, you could just use one hand. Whereas BSL, you have to use both hands. Like in ASL, hi, my name is. And in BSL, this is how you sign my name. Hi, my name is Emily. Wow, they look completely different. Question is, what does it, what does it look like to have communication access at work? I use my hearing aid at work, 
and it depends on who's speaking. Like for example, my boss and my coworkers, sometimes I don't understand what they're saying. So instead we use written communication or we do text message to make sure we understand what each other is saying. You know, because our end goal is to have a productive day. Depending on the situation, I use written communication to make sure everyone understands. Because at the end of the day, our goal is to have a productive day. No matter what, if, if we don't understand something, communication is a two-way street, so we will have to figure it out. And that's how I'm able to be successful at work. And there's been times where I've taught my coworkers some signs that we use on a daily basis. Like bathroom, break, trash. More work. What is dark sparkle? And I understand um, at this time, I didn't have many friends. At that time, I didn't have many friends. So, I would go online and play Pirates of the Caribbean. I had to come up with an avatar. Kind of like RPG. So I had created Emmy Dark Sparkle. And a lot of people from the game really loved the name. They thought it was really cool. They're like, how did you come up with that idea? And I said, I don't know. It just came to me one day. So I had to explain what Dark Sparkle meant. Dark is representing all of our bad times. You know, when we're not happy... And sparkle is all the good things that are happening in life, like love and hope and so on. Now, understand, later I met Tiz. And we both had the same vision to establish a film business. So she, I told her about the word dark sparkled and Tiz had agreed with it. She liked it. So I was like, okay, I felt flattered. And so that's how we applied it to our company name, Dark Sparkle Films. Now, our business is to help anyone with a disability, no matter what, to show their, their skills and talent, to know that they can do it. Did you know that 95% of hearing actors still play the role of a disabled person? That means only 5% of disabled people play their role. 5%. That's not right. We want to change that. We want to provide that opportunity for them 
could be involved in any film. And so that is our goal for Dark Sparkle. And that's why we had started our business. And so we are developing our logo. And at the same time, we're making short movies, trying to get recognition. So we already have short films on YouTube. So you could go and watch them and follow us on YouTube. And I would like to add another question is what does Dark Sparkle working on? Dark Sparkle is currently, and thanks to the Santa Barbara Library and to CTSL, we are working on making a short movie called Aquafax. Aquafax. And we do have deaf characters in the movie, which is exciting. And we're really looking forward to it. So that's one of our projects that we're currently working on now. And soon we will upload it to our YouTube. Soon, it's going to be released December 16th. Yep, December 16th. Yay, we're so excited. And that is with, we're collaborating with CTSL and the Santa Barbara Library. And we want to thank them for all of their support. Now, how does wearing a mask influence the communication? It is not easy because when we utilize a cell, we do use our mouth. So, for example, this is a sign for interesting. But when we sign interesting, we do use we do move our mouth a little bit like this. That which means interesting. And also it's really hard to receive that receptive information. Because when you text someone, you don't have to look at that person. So that is, that's one of the concepts of using mask. Yes, it is difficult during this coronavirus time with wearing a mask. But something that I do find funny is that deaf people, we've been using video phones and Zooms on um, our computer. So we know what to do. Whereas now hearing people have to now get used to utilizing it. So you see them with using their facial expressions more, their body language more. So it's a lot of work. And it's really difficult because also you're limited with your size, your screen size. So recently I had an interview at Target and I'd asked them if we could remove our mask and they said yes, but we have to keep our six uh, feet different. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much because I really needed the mask to be taken off for that full communication access. And they understood because I wanted to make sure that I understood the questions. I didn't want any miscommunication to happen during my interview. You know, an ASL does has its own syntax and grammar. So it was really nice of them to allow me to take off the mask and I was actually hired. Yes, for me, it's the same thing. I need that facial expressions to be able to understand an ASL and understand for hearing people, 
that I work with because I'm a cashier. So I do have a cochlear implant already that I do utilize to hear, but still sometimes with the mask on, I still have a struggle to understanding what people are saying. And it's, it's hard for me sometimes. So then I have to tell that person, can you hold on? And then I have to ask help for clarification. And it took me time to get used to other people's voicing. Like for example, if someone wants to buy a lotto ticket, I had to memorize the names of the different lottery tickets. And so when people had asked for it, I could recognize what they want. And it took time and practice and a lot of redundancy, but I was able to get used to it. It's funny, because at work, I use a mask, but it's a, a mask that painters use that have the two filters on the side. And the problem is, is when my boss is trying to communicate with me, sometimes he forgets to take off his mask. So he's talking to me and I'm looking at him. And then my second boss would be like, hey, you need, you need to uh, take down your mask so John could understand. So he would apologize for forgetting. And so they know now to remove their mask when they're communicating with me. Because the priority is to make sure that we have that communication access. And after our meetings, my manager would take off his mask and clarify what took place during the meeting. But that's our goal at the end of the day. Now, the last question is for August. First, I want to thank my team. I'm so proud of my team for all of their wonderful work and the Santa Barbara Library. They have been wonderful working with us too. Thank you. The question is, did I learn sign language and how did I get involved with the deaf community? There's no short answer. I remember my dad, we used to play patty cake together. My dad made up different manipulating stories with my hands. He made one Mr. Good Hand and the other one Mr. Bad Hand. And he moves them around while he was telling stories. I'm so interested in language development and development of my own home signing to communicate. I like that my parents didn't know what we were saying. I want to thank all of you for watching and who was involved. Thank you. Thank you, August. Thank you, August, and thank you to the team and to Santa Barbara Library for making this happen. Thank you all.